<laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to this meeting of the planning panel which is being held at the Civic Offices and is being streamed to the Council's YouTube channel. I'm Councillor Stephen Brown, Chair of the Committee. Members of the panel are present in the room tonight and I'll ask them to introduce themselves shortly. As you would expect, a number of officers have also joined us. For those present tonight, please be aware that we are not expecting a fire alarm this evening. In the event that the alarm sounds, please exit the building by the nearest marked exit and assemble outside as indicated by the marshals. I will now ask the councillors and officers present to introduce themselves and we will start with Councillor Exxon. Uh, Councillor Exxon, I'm Vice Chair of the Committee. Councillor Keith McLean, a member of the committee panel tonight. Uh, Councillor Sophie Bell, a member of this committee and panel tonight. Martin Pesci. Yuling Wong, um, planning officers. Lucy Baxter, senior planning officer. Lauren Bradwell, planning officer. Uh, Richard Stewart, development management team leader. Uh, Sean Webb, senior planning solicitor. Evening all, Alex Melia, senior governance officer. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we have three planning applications to consider this evening. I will now describe for the benefit of all how we will conduct the meeting. For each planning application, the planning officer will introduce the application. Where there are presentations, these will be displayed on the screens in the room and on the recording. I will then invite those who have registered to speak in advance of the meeting to come forward. Where those registered to speak are doing so in objection, the applicant or the applicant's agent will be invited to exercise the right of reply. I will ask that we deal with any points of clarification from the officers and councillors following the presentation before I move the recommendation in the report and invite a member of the committee to second. This does not indicate that either of us support the proposal but allows us to debate the matter. I will then invite committee members to raise any points of the debate. Each member will have up to three minutes to speak. If any amendments are proposed, they must be moved and seconded and then voted upon. Once all contributions have been made, I will sum up and take a vote on the motion or amended motion. I would also I would ask all participants to keep their contributions to the allotted time and only speak when invited to do so by the chair. If legal advice is required at any stage, I will invite the council's legal representative to comment. Voting will be conducted via a show of hands. If a recorded vote is requested, a vote will be taken by name. I will briefly reference the use of electronic devices by committee members during the meeting for the benefit of members of the public who have joined us either in person or are watching online. Councillors may be using electronic devices to access their agendas online, whilst others may wish to have access to background, background papers or policy documents. For item 5C this evening, I have previously raised objections relating to this application and will be speaking uh, on it. I will be handing chairing responsibilities to my vice chair, uh, Councillor Exxon, and excuse myself from the meeting after I've made my speaking presentation. Uh, so we move on to the agenda items number two, apologies. Alex, do we have any apologies? None received, Chair. Thank you. And declarations of interest. Uh, other than my uh, previously mentioned interest in 5C, do any of the councillors wish to disclose any interest? Councillors should declare any disclosable pecuniary interests other than other registrable interests or non-registrable interests, including other pecuniary interests they may have in the business to be transacted and officers to disclose any interest they may have in any contract to be considered. Lovely. Uh, public participation. Questions. Uh, Alex, have we received any questions not related to items on this evening's agenda? None received, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, so moving on to the applications 5A, I will now ask the planning officer to introduce the report for Hanslope surgery, uh, and I believe Lauren is going to present this report. This is item 5A for hand slope surgery. It is for a single story side extension, internal reworkings and external alterations to the car park and the building. This is the site location plan of where it currently is. And this is an aerial location just outlining the site as well and its context in terms of the neighborhood. This is a more zoomed out aerial location and I've included where the location of the additional parking is located um, in relation to the surgery. 
This is the proposed site layout. Uh, the single storey side extension is outlined where the blue lines are on there. In the top left corner, it's just a view to where the proposed extension location is going to be and also shows the existing parking that is currently on site. The bottom right corner is sort of a context view in relation to any neighbouring buildings. These are just the existing and proposed floor plans side by side so you can see what changes are taking place and it also includes a bit more of a detailed layout as to what is happening with the on-site parking as well. These are the elevations for the single storey side extension. And that is everything. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. We have one registered speaker on this application who will be speaking in support, uh, Councillor Andrew. Uh, could you please come and take the seat on the chamber floor? You will have the usual three minutes to speak, and I will try to notify you when there are 30 seconds remaining. And I'm sure you know how to use the microphones. Good evening. I'm here to uh, support the application for Hanslope surgery, um, not only as the ward councillor, but also as a Hanslope parish councillor, uh, a resident, and unfortunately, sometimes a patient. Um, since 2018, Hanslope has seen a 40% increase in houses, which has brought lots of great things to the village, but has certainly put our surgery under strain. These plans will give us two more treatment rooms uh, and a storeroom and a very innovative 24-7 dispensary, um, which will free up a lot of space and devote more time and space to patient care. Um, although there's been concerns about parking, um, we have the new car park, which is just up the road from the surgery, which will afford 24 spaces. Um, it was indicated on the plans that it was 80 metres. I measured it this evening, 60.1 metres, and it took me 37 seconds to walk in four-inch heels. Um, we also have parking across the road for staff um, that is monitored by CCTV by the Parish Council in case anybody's under the wrong impression that any vehicles are left with medical supplies. Um, the Parish Council will be putting up signage um, on the new car park. We'll also be using our enforcement officer and some volunteers to help people get used to the facts of the new parking arrangements. So I hope that uh, you will look favourably on this application because it really will be of huge benefit to all the residents of Hanslope, Castlethorpe and some of the other villages served by the surgery. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Andrews. Officers, do you wish to offer any points of clarification made by the Speaker? No clarification, no. Okay, uh, lovely. Uh, before we begin our consideration of the application, just to be clear to members of the public present and online that we have to consider material planning matters as set out in planning law. Uh, do councillors have any questions of clarification for the planning officer? Can I please ask that, as far as practical, deal with questions of clarification before we go into the debate? Councillor McLean. Thank you. Um, question relates to paragraph 7.11 to the electric vehicle charging. Um, rapid charging would be most appropriate for this location given the length of time patients would be in the surgery. Rapid charges is a very vague description. You want a super fast charger because for 20 minutes, if you do it at a, a standard one, some of the ones that we have outside, you won't get very much of a charge. So, and I also would make a comment that this report does not mention building regs, yet the other two reports tonight say that EV charging points are covered by building regs. So we can clarify both with the type of charger uh, to be put in, and there's a, a, a condition as well. And then on um, section 7.1, 7 7.16, uh, towards the end, um, it states, um, Amenity space and rear habitable rooms given the surgery is open during normal working hours and not at all over the weekends. Does that mean you've got an assurance from the doctor's surgery will never open at the weekends? Because I know an awful lot of surgeries that open at least Saturday morning, and I suspect there'll be more hours open, uh, opening as uh, 
health services progress. So I'd like you could advise on those, please. So with the opening hours, I did check the, um, so the surgeries run by the Parks Medical Trust, I think it is, and I'm, I had a look at their website and they have standard hours on there that are listed. Um, they are only open one Saturday every month, I believe. So as far as I'm aware, I don't think this would change. You said they are open. You've actually written the report, they aren't open. So there's a clarification that you're now saying they will be open one Saturday morning a month. What I'm suggesting, what I ask the question is, have you got an assurance it will not increase? Because it's one weekend, one Saturday in a, in a month. It, if things change and the surgery decides to extend its hours, that has an impact on the residents. So that's my question was, had you got an assurance from them, they will not open at the weekends. You've now said they are open at the weekends, so I'm a little bit confused. Perhaps uh, it's probably an oversight on my part, but they, I think they definitely does say on the website that they are open one Saturday, I think between 10 and 2, um, one, yeah, one Saturday every month. Um, perhaps just needed to clarify that in the report. Um, I have... I don't know. We'd, we'd have it, to get it comes back to the fact I asked. It, it, what it does now is fine, but it, it, the way the report's written is it, they won't be doing it. I'm suggesting healthcare might change. They might want to open for two Saturdays or three Saturdays or all day Saturday and go into the evening some uh, some days because that's the, that's the way healthcare's going. You're saying it's as it is now. My question was, have you got an assurance that it won't extend? I don't think I'm going to hear the answer that they will, but that's, it, that's for the debate. Before we kind of dive too deep into uh, the state of the health service and how much the surgery is going to be open over the weekend, is there a specific concern? I mean, the reference in the paper about the surgery being open is about noise generated in consulting rooms. I don't think that even if it was open all day on a Saturday, we'd consider the noise generated in a consulting room as a reason, as a significant level of noise that would really impact the neighbours and therefore wouldn't, even if, it, even if we didn't have the assurance and even if, contrary, we actually had them opening all day Saturday, I'm not sure that it's a point beyond the minor uh, sort of point that it should be updated in the paperwork. Are you concerned that this is a reason to contest the application? I've asked for clarification. You've asked me not to make a comment until we get into the debate. I guess the, the question is whether the clarification is needed given the nature of the point. Like you're, you're, you're asking, uh, is there going to be an additional length of time where there isn't really any disturbance to neighbours? Like, it, is it a relevant, needed thing to discuss is what I'm driving at for you. I've asked a question. I've not had a, an answer uh, specifically about whether there's been assurance given. It's my decision whether I, how I interpret the, the information given to me. So... I, we, I, we, we're not going to get any further with this tonight. Sorry, I was just checking and I think I mis misread it because on the medical, the park's medical practice, it says they don't currently offer Saturday clinics. So that was a mistake on my part. I thought they were open on a Saturday, but they are not. And... I've asked you whether you've got an assurance they won't open in the future. Not what you're losing what they're doing now. There's a changing, as Stephen's point, that, you know, it's not a debate, but if you haven't got an assurance, then they could do it. That's all my point is. But I said, there's no point in going any further, Chair. OK, are there any other questions on the application for the officers from councillors? Well, the answer to the first question I asked. OK, for absolute clarity, do you have any assurance that they're not going to open on a Saturday in future. Come in. Um, just in response to that, obviously the, the existing surgery, as we found from Lauren, doesn't currently operate on a Saturday. Um, 
as the existing without a, an extension, they could operate on a Saturday. Any disturbance, etc., would be given by environmental health legislation in terms of um, a statutory nuisance. Um, so, it, from my point of view, it's not reasonable to, to control the opening hours at the moment. That would be left to other legislation. So, the proposal doesn't include any restrictions on their opening hours. I hope that answers your query. It doesn't answer the question, but I accept what you're saying. Now the answer to the first question. Can you repeat the first question for clarity? It relates to electric vehicles. Thank you, Chair. Um, just to confirm, the building regulations for electric vehicle charging is covered for residential properties only. Um, so for businesses, um, E-class uses, etc., there's still a requirement to put those, those conditions on to, in order to require them. Thank you for that. There's, there was a second part about whether it's a rapid or a super fast charger, given the, in, in, the intim, intimation is that they'll be there 25 to 30 minutes, which, if you're using a 7 kilowatt charger, doesn't get me very much. You're using a 150 kilowatt charger gets you quite a lot. So it's what type of charger is I would be expecting to see an appropriate charger for a short term stay. That's certainly something we can bear in mind when we receive the details subject to discharge in that condition um, and absolutely bear that point in mind in terms of the requirement for rapid charging due to the likely length of stay. Thank you. That's, that, is, that answers the question because there may be technical constraints as to how fast the charger you can actually put there. Thank you. Any other questions from the rest of the panel? Okay, uh, in that case, uh, I will now move uh, the debate. So I will now propose a recommendation uh, that item 5A, 23027-48 full is uh, permission be granted subject to the conditions set out in the main report and as supplemented or modified in any accompanying written or verbal update to the panel. Do I have a seconder? Seconded. Thank you. Uh, would anyone like to make a contribution to the debate? Councillor Rexon. I'm going to be supporting this. Uh, I just like the phraseology. There is already a significant shortfall in parking of around 30 spaces uh, required on site. The loss of three extra spaces is not considered significant. I just think that's a lovely phrase, phraseology, and it uh, doesn't really read very well, but it doesn't matter. Thank you. Anyone else? Councillor Petchy? I can just say very briefly, Chair, that uh, Hans Lepp are very lucky that their doctors are in a position to expand their surgery to meet the, uh, meet the needs of the expanding population. So I think it's, it would be uh, absurd of us to um, refuse it on, on any grounds. Councillor Bell. Yeah, I, I agree. Because um, I know, obviously, this was brought to council because there was conflict with one of the policies in the plan. But as I understand it with planning, planning is often a balance between the pub public benefits versus um, potential conflicts in, in this case, which is quite frankly my, a minor policy element, given that there's going to quite a lot of other parking down the road. I mean, I think we can all agree that increased provision at doctor's surgeries, I mean, it takes me forever to get a doctor's appointment at my local GP, can only be a good thing for residents of Hanslip. And for that um, reason, I'll be supporting this application. Anything to add? Fine, thank you very much. I thought appropriate for to hold back. Um, my question was for clarity. Um, I know the area pretty well. I've watched it develop. As Alison said, the, the rate of growth there has been phenomenal. In some ways, unfortunately, it was good to hear her say that it's, it's now being um, received uh, pretty well as part of the village. It does need growth. It doesn't increase the number of consulting rooms. It increases the number of treatment rooms. Um, but the, the ability to see more people, perhaps um, do more primary care um, procedures in the surgery and do the 24-hour uh, dispensary, that's a great innovation. 
Uh, and I'm sure that the people of Hanslope and, the, and the, the surrounding villages will be very grateful and hope that uh, once we grant planning permission, which I think probably is going to be fairly unanimous, or unanimous, they get on with the job and uh, get it built. Lovely. Thank you all for your uh, contributions. Um, from uh, my side of things, I think, as uh, Councillor Patchy said, we are lucky that we have the option to increase the surgery here. Lots of the surgeries around Milton Keynes are full to bursting and there aren't options. Um, and as Councillor Bowen mentioned, it's a fairly minor policy conflict. And as Councillor Acton pointed out, very eloquently worded conflict uh, in the papers. Uh, the papers also note that the parish council is going to take over ownership of the car park. So with one of the parish councillors in the room, it might be suggested that that car park might be extended to ease some of that um, burden of the extra cars. Um, whether there is the funding to do that or time scale, uh, the car park didn't look like it was designed in the most efficient way. It looked like the developer had put in their bare minimum contribution. So a, a large car park could certainly be managed to help overcome that uh, policy conflict, but obviously that is not something we can uh, include in the conditions today. Um, so uh, on that, I will ask Alex if you can move to the vote, please. Thank you, Chair. Councillors, please raise your hand if you're in favour of the motion. That's unanimous, Chair. Thank you very much, everyone. We move on to the second uh, application today, uh, the Queensway in Bletchley, and I will ask Planning Officer Lucy Baxter to present the report. So this application is for the change of use of the first floor of 69 to 71 Queensway into four one-bedroom residential units with a new residential entrance, roof lights and associated alterations. This includes the removal of the first floor wraparound window and the insertion of new windows to the front elevation. So here is the application site located on Queensway. The parking is to the rear, which is accessed off Oxford Street. Um, it's within Bletchley Town Centre um, and there are a number, number of commercial and residential units within the immediate area. So here we have the front elevation as existing and the side elevation as existing and the rear elevation and the parking area to the rear. Here is the ground floor layout um, to the rear, sorry, which shows the parking for six vehicles as well as space for uh, cycle parking and waste uh, storage. And then at first floor, you've got the four flats. Here's the roof plan, which shows the light wells and the proposed roof lights. And the proposed rear and front elevations. As you can see, the windows have changed on the front elevation. And the proposed side elevation as well. Thank you. That concludes the presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, we have no registered speakers on this application. Um, so before, before we begin our consideration, just to be clear to members of the public once more, um, we have to consider material planning method, matters as set out in law. Do any of the councillors have questions of clarification for the planning officer? And once again, as far as practical, deal with questions of clarification before we go to debate. No. Lovely. Um, in that case, I, I will move straight on to the debate and I will propose the recommendation for debate is item 5B, uh, which is that permission be granted subject to the conditions set out in the main report and as supplemented, modified in any accompanying written or verbal update of the panel. Do I have a seconder, please? Seconded. Thank you. Would anyone like to speak on this debate? Councillor Patchy. Again, briefly, Chair, this is the use, the the proper, the active use of the upper stories of shops in shopping centres is something that everybody is enjoining on um, on planning authorities and local authorities to encourage. And I think this is a perfect example of where 
uh, storerooms turning into useful accommodation and reviving the life of a dying high street is something that, that is um, to be commended and I shall support the application. Councillor McKean. Thank you. <coughs> uh, like Martin, I'll be supporting it. Um, I think it's a pragmatic use of the, the space uh, and the, overrides the, the policy. My one comment is I wish they could have made a, an ugly building look better because it still looks ugly. <coughs> okay, uh, yes, I think we're all in agreement that uh, this is, as you say, a pragmatic use of the shop uh, space that is no longer being used as a shop. Um, it fits in a few flats in a, a reasonably good space um, and Everyone has their own opinion on aesthetics, so we won't let that influence our decisions. Uh, Alex, can I ask you to take the vote, please? Thank you, Chair. Councillors, once again, please raise your hand if you're in favour of the motion. That's unanimous again, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, and at this point, as we come to item 5C, I'm going to step down and hand over to my very able vice chair so that he can lead you through this point. Uh, thank you. We'll uh, now come to item 5C, uh, it is 23 forward slash 02791 forward slash HOU, 1 Ledbury, Great Linford, Milton Keynes. Uh, I'll ask the uh, planning, of planning officer to introduce the report. So um, it's a retrospective planning application, item 5C for um, at one library, Great Linford, for retention of first floor re-extension with glass balconies, installation of windows on west side elevation door and windows on east side elevation and erection of a front porch extension. So um, this application has been submitted following an enforcement complaint and the retrospective application is the product of that investigation where the applicants are invited to retrospectively apply for the planning permission. So here's the site location plan. The site um, is located at the junction of the single legal drive and library. Here's the aerial location plan. And here's the site layout plan. So in this application, it's important to note the planning history that um, a planning permission was granted um, for a reduction uh, extensions and the permission has been implemented. So it's a significant material consideration for that. Um, given it's a highly material and fallback position, the panel should focus on the effects of the previously approved scheme and the current construction scheme. So what I will show right now is about the comparison between the previously approved schemes and the current construct situation. So here's the ground floor plan with windows and door installed in the side elevation and the front porch. Here's the first floor plan with the difference um, of the enclosed glass balconies but with the same footprint on the top of the ground floor rooftop that was approved and windows on site elevations. Here's the front elevation plans with the difference of the erection of front porch. Here's the east elevation plans with the difference with um, the windows on first floor and the enclosed first floor rear balcony. Here's the west elevation plans with installation of window, additional windows. Here's the rear elevation plans with difference with um, the glass balconies, 
first floor rear extension with glass balcony, but enclosed with brick wall. Here's the site photos from um, the front porch and also the view to the southeast of the windows there. Here's the photos from the rear existing garden and the other side views to the northwest. Here's some pictures from the first floor glass balcony and the recommendation is for approval subject to condition. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. We have uh, three speakers registered in objection to this application. You'll have three minutes to make your representation. Uh, when I call you forward, please introduce yourself and who you are representing. And I will remind you of when there are 30 seconds remaining. So uh, my first speaker is Mary Love. Hi, my name is Mary Love. I live on Ledbury. I'm here to object to number one, uh, Ledbury, Great Linford. I'd like to cover off a brief overview of the area, talk about the impact this planning application has had on the very small road that we live in, along with the non-adherence to the planning application process undertaken at the property. Ledbury is a small cul-de-sac of detached properties. There are 26 in total, which stand on large plots, and we all have a fair degree of privacy. As new younger families have moved in over the past years, many have added extensions and they are keeping with the in the cul-de-sac and using matching materials and roof tiles and have all complied with planning applications. One Ledbury is of particular concern. Since January 2023, there have been four planning applications of which three have been approved and one has been withdrawn. The original planning application in January 2023 was for a double storey side extension, part single, part double, with porch extension to replace the existing porch. The second planning application, April 23, was for a double storey side extension, part single, part double, with Juliet balconies along the front porch extension. The other two applications were for an outbuilding in the garden, of which hasn't been started but has been approved, as well as a dropped curb, which has now been withdrawn. In 2024, a retrospective planning application for the, re the retention of the first floor extensions with, bal with balconies was then superseded by a further application of the windows on the left side elevation and doors and windows on the right side elevation, again retrospective superseded. My main concern as a resident of Ledbury are the following. The impact that these balconies have on the neighbouring property privacy. There is a visual intrusion to the property of number two. If anyone was to use the balconies that have been built, they will be able to see directly into the conservatory where an elderly couple live, one of who is housebound and the other is the main carer. The planning application was for Juliet balconies only, which would have reduced that risk. These two large balconies on the back of the property can be clearly seen from St Ledger's Drive and are not in keeping with any of the surrounding properties. With the numerous planning applications that have taken place throughout the building work, the most recent one being not only um, retrospective but superseded due to the applicant missing large parts of the building that had been built, um, one of which looks directly in the windows and directly into the neighbouring property, further impacting the neighbour's property's privacy. The first Thank floor you. side window is completely of complete concern. The mismatch of materials, as well as the overall design, is not in keeping with any of the other properties on Ledbury, um, of which there are many with new builds on. In summary, my main concern lies with the impact the building work has taken place on the neighbouring property's privacy, the prominent balconies overlooking the adjacent property, the notable deviations from the neighbourhood's aesthetic look with mismatched materials, and I urge the planning authority to carefully consider these issues. It's crucial to maintain the privacy and the integrity of the cul-de-sac, but also ensure, ensure that building work carried out complies with the planning application that was Fine, put you. forward. Thank you.
Can I call down Dawn Shaula? Good evening. My name is Dawn Fullerton and we live at number seven at number twenty seven Ledbury, which is directly opposite number one Ledbury. I will not go into detail about the numerous planning applications, which were effectively retrospective as the work requested under these planning applications were already underway when the applications were submitted, nor will I go into detail how the numerous enforcement breaches were, held, were handled. If we look at the current planning application and situation in isolation, I would like to raise the following issues. The roof tiles on the extension of the house are of a completely different colour to that of the original house. Note that the approved, pla approved planning application is not specific about the colour of the roof tiles, although the delegated report dated the 24th of April 23 states, the external services of the development hereby permitted shall be constructed only of materials of a type and colour which match those of the existing. There does not appear to be any reference to different colour roof tiles on the approved drawings, so presumably the new roof tiles on the extension should match the existing roof. As a side note, an extension at number 11 Ledbury that was done in the same time period has roof tiles that match the original roofing. So those tiles are clearly available. We do not agree with the council's statement on the flat roofed front porch extension in the panel report. The statement reads, the objection regarding its impact on the appearance of the area is acknowledged. However, Given the setback of the dwelling from the highway and the open nature of the porch, this addition is not considered to, be, to cause unacceptable harm to the character of the existing dwelling or surrounding area. When you enter Ledbury, the first thing you see is the flat-roofed front porch. And please note that these two pillars are painted bright white and have two bright lights attached to the front that are left on all night. These do not match the existing dwelling, nor any of the other dwellings on the street. These two pillars and two lights are directly in our line of sight from our dining room, study, and three of the four bedrooms, and are clearly visible when we step outside our front door. The rear glass balconies are by far the biggest concern that we feel that we are not in keeping, that are not in keeping with the character of the cul-de-sac. These balconies can clearly be seen from the garden at number two and very visible when walking along St. Ledger Drive. More importantly, they allow anyone on those balconies to see directly into the windows of number two Ledbury. The delegated report dated the 24th of April clearly states these are Juliet balconies where the occupiers or future occupants would not be able to walk out onto the flat roof. There was a reason why the owners of number one Ledbury did not apply for the complete works as it stands today from the very beginning. We and the majority of the residents in Ledbury could see clearly Exact, early on exactly what that property would look like and it is exactly as it stands now. Perhaps you can explain to me why. Can the council also explain why the most recently Time, submitted please. plans do not reflect the actual floor plan? Time, thank you. Last but not least, Councillor Brown. Thank you. Well, uh, this is the first time I've addressed the panel from this side, so this is a, a new experience for me. Um, I don't want to uh, repeat the points uh, that have already been given about uh, the lack of privacy too much, um, but I will try to uh, expand upon them in, in the time that I have. Um, I think it's fair to say that a lot of the distress that has been caused by this build is the fact that it is the fifth planning application in the space of 18 months, and yet as the project has gone on, it was very clear from the start what the uh, applicant was intending, which has built uh, a feeling of mistrust amongst the neighbours and the community, and that has led to bad blood, understandably, and if the applicant was here, it would have been, I think, worthwhile uh, them acknowledging that and, and making an apology. I think it's also worth noting that 
the uh, existing front elevation and approved front uh, elevation in the plans is actually not what it looks like, um, which again goes to the fact that throughout the entire application process and the entire build process, there's been and what feels like to the outsiders an element of subterfuge by the applicant in trying to mislead the planning authority uh, in terms of what they're uh, intending to build and, and how they were uh, planning to do it. Uh, for reference, what I'm referring to here is that the roof line actually at the front goes all the way up to the windows. It doesn't stop halfway up the roof. Um, so either they've just not drawn very good plans or they've kind of ignored the plans. Um, but either way, they're, they're not sticking to what has been approved and they're just continually wasting the council's time by adding new applications in that. Um, it was mentioned earlier that there is quite a, a lack of privacy now that the new balconies have gone into the neighbouring property. Uh, if we were able to have the pictures back up taken from the balconies, you'll see there is a strip uh, between the two lawned back gardens, which is... Uh, a sort of mini allotment for number two Ledbury and is a place of sanctuary for the uh, older couple who uh, live there and that is incredibly overlooked by the new balconies uh, from where they are. Um, I think also one of the pictures was taken from the right hand balcony but also right up against the wall um, and one of the joys of retrospective planning uh, even if we wish they'd got it right the first time is that we can actually see how people use the space rather than it being a theoretical space, um, theoretical idea, and we've, the residents have told me that people are standing at the front of that balcony and they're not just stood in one corner, they're all the way along it, they can look seconds. right into um, the back garden and, and, in, and make the residents feel less secure, less safe, less at home in their own space, everything from the allotment part of the garden, the lawn, and even right into the conservatory. Um, I think every councillor here knows that uh, we are regularly accused, both in person and on social media, um, of the council not doing enough to follow planning guidelines. There's often comments on social media about accepting backhanders and brown paper envelopes, obviously none of which is true, but when people are able to lie to the council about what they're going to build and then get away with building whatever they want to build, that doesn't help that perception. And I think I would encourage the panel tonight to protect the residents uh, in the neighbourhood and vote against this application. Thank you. Thank you. The right of reply has been offered to the applicant and their agents who are joining us online. Are joining us online. Uh, we'll have a total of nine minutes. Can I ask you to turn on your video and microphone to make your representation? Once again, please introduce yourself and who you are representing, and I will remind you when there are 30 seconds remaining. I have Jigat Than Balal Singham. I don't believe they've joined us online, Chair. Um, the Invite has been sent, and we did discuss via phone call, but it doesn't appear that Mr. Ballasinger is online. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, do the officers wish to uh, clarify any of the issues raised by the speakers? No specific clarification, Chair. I think it's all covered de in very much, very detailed in the report. Um, but happy to answer any questions as we uh, as we move on. Before we begin our consideration of the application, just to be clear to members of the public present and online that we have to consider material planning matters as set out in planning law. Do any of the councillors have any questions of clarification for the planning officers? Uh, please can I ask, as far as practical, we deal with the questions of clarification before we go into the debate. Note, points of clarification should not be asked of the objectors or applicants. Martin. Uh, we've heard a lot about the glass balconies, but the other, um, the illustrations you showed shows a great deal more fenestration on both flanks. Um, are they equally of concern in terms of overlooking um, privacy, or are they uh, merely a minor, a minor peccadillo? 
Um, sorry, are you talking about uh, are there any neighbors concerned about the overlook? Oh, Uh, thank you, Councillor yeah. Petchy. Um, obviously, the, all of the issues are covered within the report, but in terms of the additional windows, um, there is one window of concern, um, and the reason for condition two within the report, which requires uh, one of the first floor windows within serving the TV room, um, there's a requirement for that window in the eastern elevation to be obscure glazed within three months of the decision to, uh, to address that matter. Keith. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to go back to some of the slides, but taking the point that Stephen made about the, the picture taken from the balcony. But can I ask Alex to put the lights out here? Because I'm, you've got a much better screen to look at it. I can normally get all of this lot out, so I just... Yeah, I'm just showing the configuration. That suggests that that would be those off, but that just needs to be turned more off. That's a bit better. Thank you. So that's the view from the balcony on the first floor looking towards where the, neighb the neighbours who have been referred to as having a conservatory and being elderly and, and so on, is that correct? Yes, um, the picture is on the right, that's um, is the number two neighbour's garden. Okay. And I, I, I didn't see on, on any of the slides that we've got what's been approved, what's been built, and what they're applying for now. They should, I would like to see the, the whole layering. So I'm trying to work out which bits have been built in, in a, accordance with the application that's been approved, which bits have been built in not in adherence to what the claim permission granted, has, and what is different from the application that's coming in now. Because I think there's a I think there's a lot of confusion about the way this um, this building work has been undertaken, and I noted the word that um, Stephen used, which I'll be bringing back later. And I just struggling to, to understand which bits, albeit retrospective, um, and that's something I'm sure that Rex will be making clear to us that we have no, unfortunately, we have no way of. Uh, determining it as if it was uh, before it had been built. But I just want to understand the whole process of how they've got from where they started, the approved application, and there were several, and to what they're now applying for uh, at this um, time. And thank you. I think the, we've, we've had two planning applications effectively. So the first one, um, you can see the approved rear elevation um, on the slide in front of you. Um, and then the current application, obviously as a result of enforcement investigations, a, a retrospective application was invited. Um, since that, that application had been submitted, there had been a number of superseded plans as it became apparent that the works had been carried out, not e even in accordance with the plans that they initially submitted. Um, as far as we're aware, the plans that so the, the plans on the right-hand side of the screen, as I'm looking at it now, um, are the as-built um, plans. The main difference being an extension over what was a flat f flat roof rear extension with an enclosed balcony, which is enclosed on both sides, um, as you can see from the photos. There are some additional windows in the in the side elevations, some looking overlooking St Ledger Street. Um, and one first floor window looking towards number two, which is the subject of the condition that I mentioned earlier.
Thank you. Sophie? <coughs> yeah, I just have a couple of things. Yeah, I, obviously I had a possibly a bit too much time on my hands at the weekend and I geo-referenced the plans over each other and colour-coded them so I could see what was different between the existing, the uh, proposed and the original before any work was carried out. Um, looking at the eastern, east side elevation, I know that there's a new window on the existing, but that's, that is in the same position as, that, as a window that was on the um, like pre-existing evaluation before, before, it, before the work took place. That's fine. Um, I, I, I believe that the condition regarding the window on the top floor, if that's replaced, uh, should address the privacy concerns with that in terms of screening. The one thing that I do, <coughs> and we've heard it quite a lot tonight actually, is re in respect to the balconies. So I wondered whether, um, in your view, whether there's anything we could do perhaps regarding a conditional something to revert that, to either make um, request changes made to the balcony or request that that's reverted back to the Julio as, a, a, as, in, as on the uh, sort of original application. I don't know whether there'd be any pallet and grounds to apply that condition or... So, so we're, be, we're being asked to determine the application as submitted, um, which yeah. is for the retention of the balconies as they are. Um, in situations where you have balconies proposed, um, where they're usable, the a usual condition, um, as I think is referenced in the um, appeal decision that's referenced in the report, relates to the side elevations of, the, of those balconies to prevent any direct side overlooking, mm. rather than um, views down, down the garden, which, as you'll know, is an ordinary situation in any residential area. You look out of your rear window. Mm. Um, if you want to, you can look into your neighbour's garden, but you have to make an effort to do that because it's an, it's an oblique angle. Um, and that's the justification for the report. Um, and the recommendation is a comparison between the extant and approved scheme and the scheme that's been proposed and the impacts as outlined in the report are not considered to be significant enough to warrant refusal of the application. Obviously, we're appreciating the concerns that have been raised. Um, it wasn't so much in regard to outright refusal, but it's whether there was anything anything further we could do regarding conditions for conditions if we were to approve on the existing balconies to sort of improve them in line with some of the residents' comments. Um, I, th I, th I think any conditions would probably restrict the use of those balconies. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll take some advice from from Sean in terms of whether whether conditions would be appropriate to ensure the doors are closed, removing the balconies. But obviously, we are we are being asked to consider the application um, as submitted. Um, as a, as um, Richard has said, the, it's the application that's before you this evening that you need to consider, um, and you've got to consider whether there are material planning considerations that would enable you to refuse this application or grant this application in any harm. Um, I, from hearing from the planners, um, especially Richard, that they can't condition or they don't think a condition is appropriate. Um, it's a case of that's something for you to give consideration when you're determining this application, but the application is what is before you tonight. And if you feel that the application before you causes harm to neighbouring residents or overlooking or one of the material planning considerations, you may consider that there is enough harm to warrant a refusal of this application, but we would obviously need planning reasons why you intend to refuse an application. Uh, thanks, Sean. I think the, the point for me is the, the difference between the approved scheme and what we're being asked to, or what, what you're being asked to consider. Um, that's what you would potentially be looking at restricting, um, which is what they're applying for. Um, so I think if, if there are significant concerns with the retention of the balconies and their use of them, um, then that's something for members to consider. I don't think it would be reasonable in the context of the application to restrict the use of those balconies or require their removal. I think that would be for a later matter dependent on the outcome of the, um, of the meeting um, and the decision you make. Okay, it's just I'm curious because obviously um, as condition for um, this application you've recommended that the window on the first floor of the eastern elevation, I think it's the eastern elevation, um, um, should be changed um, as part of if the application is approved. So I'm curious as to why um, <coughs> that's, that uh, condition hasn't also been attached potentially to request changes to the balconies, um, seeing as obviously we've requested changes to the submitted the submitted plans for the current application 
in, in respect to changing that window, but we haven't done so for the balconies and so the balconies, which are obviously new compared to the authorised applica original application as well. The recommendation is one that the balconies as constructed are acceptable. Um, what condition had, you mind to, had in mind in terms of restricting, would it be restricting use of the balconies, obscure glazing, <coughs> obviously the, the glass balustrade is only waist high, so obscuring that mm. wouldn't, wouldn't have any effect. Um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure, but I wonder whether it's some, whether, um, whether it, I wanted to gather whether it was a sort of a, something that was a possibility in, in principle, um, and then sort of discuss that in a bit more detail when we go open to debate at the next, uh, when we open the application up to debate as a committee. You may consider that, as Richard has mentioned, the balconies are only waist high, so obscuring them will not stop somebody, I don't know, standing up <laughs> in their balcony and looking over the balcony to be forward. And then conditions are obviously to make a development acceptable in planning terms. So if You've got to consider when you're granting when you're granting conditions whether they actually make a development acceptable that you would normally not make acceptable, and that's whether you want to add a condition. That would be a matter as part of the debate, obviously, but it would also be a matter that you would have to make a consideration about a decision about as the decision maker for this application. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Are there any other questions for our officers? No. Okay, I will now propose the recommendation for debate for item 5C. Uh, that permission be granted subject to the conditions set out in the main report and as supplemented and modified in any accompanying written or verbal update to the panel. Do I have a second? Thank you. Uh, do any of the councillors wish to contribute to the debate? Uh, Martin. Chair, um, I think um, that uh, it's always a, extremely annoying when somebody, uh, a developer or a, a resident, does the kind of thing that, that has happened here, sort of cock a snook at planning regulations. Um, but what we have to look at is whether or not there is an easy way of um, remediating what it is that they've done. And I think that it would not be impossible for them to remedy the defects that our residents have pointed out. The fact that it now stands out like a sore thumb from the quite consistent, otherwise quite consistent appearance of Lebury. Uh, we, as a planning authority, ask people to do extensions in sympathetic materials for precisely this reason, and if they haven't, then he should be asked to do so properly. Um, again, the fact that there is that uh, rather garish porch, which I think he should be asked to uh, replace in a way that fits in with Lebri, is something that we should take into consideration as well, of course, of the issues that we've discussed quite extensively about the balcony and the privacy of the next-door neighbours. So, for those reasons, because I think that it is possible for the, um, for the applicant to actually uh, do what he's supposed to do and replace what he, what he has already done uh, without too much trouble to anybody, um, I'm going to vote against this um, application in, in the hope that we can persuade him to um, build what he was supposed to build. Uh, thank you. Uh, anybody else like to comment? 
think um, sort of thinking with respect to the balcony and a potential um, condition if committee were to decide to approve the application tonight, um, something that I think might make a little bit of a uh, change in so far as it would re reduce the ability of somebody to sort of peer out over the balcony and look, you know, look round the, the uh, abutting wall into the neighbouring properties and overlook, I understand it's overlooking the conservatory, would be whether it's possible to request that the, um, the glass balconies are um, brought back towards the um, frontage of the build, building by, I don't know, um, that, I guess that's something that could be approved by, by officers at a later date, but <coughs> whether it's possible to... Um, basically request that, that sort of glass frontage is um, reduced back closer to the building to reduce the lo likelihood that somebody standing on that balcony will be able to lean out further and look at past sort of around the edge of the building into the neighbouring gardens. Thank you. Keith. Thank you. I thank you to both Sophie and Martin for what they've said. Um, I was just, you know, can we persuade the applicant? Well, given the history, I, I, there's three of us in the room who might well remember 41 Portland Drive. My recollection there is the applicant, uh, when challenged by um, members of the committee in those days when you could do it, his, his, his comment was, well, I employ a bill to do that. I don't know anything about this. I'm, an, I'm a surgeon. So I'm going through my mind now. Who's at fault for, for building not in, in uh, alignment with the, the planning application that was approved? Was it the applicant saying, to the bill, I'll just go, oh, I'll sort it out later, or the, bill, the builder to me who was professional should have said, well, I think we should go back and get planning permission before the event. But as I've already commented, retrospectively, we can't do that. Um, I remember well the Juliet bul uh, balconies um, in here and, and other places. I'm, I'm with Sophie um, that I don't think those balconies as built are, are right. They shouldn't be there. Um, if he wanted them, he should have applied for them at the time. Now we've been asked to approve something that is there. We can't change. I know what Sophie's trying to do, and I would support it. But we can't check. We can't put a, a change of plan in because we'd have to then. And we, but that's not within our remit. So I'm coming down the, the line of, of Martin uh, to uh, reject the application. I think Stephen used um, a very astute word, and that subterfuge. And I think this is. Uh, development by stealth and subterfuge. I don't like that. And I think the, the, the points made by the residents are absolutely spot on. But I'm going to do something. I'm, I, I, thank you for the photographs, but they don't give me enough. This is one we should have had a site inspection and gone and had a look at it and seen for ourselves what it looks like. Um, however good so the photographs are, I can't really feel for it. So I'm minded to move for a deferral so that we can go and have a look at the site and then uh, come back and debate it uh, and make the decision then. But I do need someone to support me on that. Deferral. I'll, I'll ask for some advice about that, but I'll let's make a comment. One of my, one of my favourite uh, little quotations for this panel is, we are a, a quasi-judicial body. We make judgments based on legal, legitimate planning laws, so we can't refuse things or grant things just because we like them or don't like them. It has to be done on legitimate legal planning grounds. Uh, if something was refused... Uh, and, and enforcement uh, was to follow. Uh, we've learnt from uh, Portland Drive and others that refusal is not about putting things back to where they were. Uh, enforcement is not about putting things back to where they were, but to mitigate any damage that has been done by the application. And uh, is a, a very... Uh, time-consuming and difficult process. 
We have had uh, a, 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 a motion for deferral. Can I ask uh, for some advice concerning a deferral? Um, I have spoken to Alex. Um, I believe a deferral needs a seconder before it can be voted upon. Um, so that was the only thing I'd like to raise, that if, I know Councillor McLean has raised a deferral, but he will require a seconder to enable to this matter to move forward. I'm happy to second the request for a deferral. If we've got enough time, um, if there's enough time left to be able to hear it, to be able to defer the application and still hear it. So um, right now, the application, um, the deadline for this is third, um, is 24th of April. The existing like planning application deadlines next Wednesday. Just in time. Well, for, for the benefit of the public and uh, those anybody online, uh, uh, would somebody like to just explain to us uh, what the process of a deferral actually means in practice? A deferral would mean that um, the matter would be deferred until the next time the panel meets. So, and in between, I'm going to say today, tomorrow morning, and like enough time so that the planning officers can write a report following the, the deferral, um, there would need to be a site visit. You would need to be out on site, but from what I'm hearing, there are conversations going out on about deadlines for making a determination, which, but if it is deferred, it would be deferred before and would probably come back in our next panel, which I understand is late June. Chair, just in terms of the timescales, um, there is a deadline for the application, but it is not a critical one. Um, and if members wish to defer the, the item for a site visit, that's, that's obviously within, within their gift. I um, just wanted to come back on, on one thing or just respond to one of the um, issues raised by Count, Councillor Bell in terms of the potential conditions for reducing the size of the balcony. The balcony currently is only 0.98 metres wide. Um, so in terms of reducing the size of that, I, I fear that, that would be result in an unusable space, which is effectively contrary to what we're being asked to determine or what you were being asked to determine tonight. Also, what it is different to be, being what's been asked to determine this evening, so it would probably require the review because it's not as part of the application before you t this evening. The, the application before you is the balcony as proposed in the planning application that's before you for determination this evening. Thank you. Uh, if we did have a deferral, it's always disappointing when then the right of reply is not taken. Uh, so it might, if a deferral could place that, would uh, give the uh, applicant the, the, the opportunity to use their right of reply. And it would be interesting to, to see what they had to say. I have had uh, a proposer and a seconder for a deferral on this application. So can I go to Alex? Yes, Chair, I can second. Um, just because it's been proposed and seconded, though, we do need to open it to debate before we move to a vote, if that's OK. Deferral. OK. Councillors, would anybody like to uh, open the debate? Well, can I say I shall vote against deferment? I think we have all the evidence we need. I don't think there's any evidence that, that uh, I think <coughs> we could determine. I think, we think the deferral is merely putting off a difficult decision. Anybody else? Keith. Uh, Martin may well be right, but on, on this occasion I feel that for me to make a decision based on the plans, the report and the, the pictures, I don't have a feel for it, and, and thank you Richard for saying the, the width of the balcony, uh, that isn't, I can't see that very clearly on the plans, that's no disrespect to anybody, but plans are plans and eyes are eyes. Are eyes. Um, I did say I would probably vote against it, 
so if the deferral does not succeed, then I will stand by what I've said and, and vote against it. Um, but I think if we go and have a look at it and then we still vote against it, that would be good. If we go and look at it and whoever's on the panel at the time, I'm going to remember, it may well not be the four of us, or in fact uh, a fifth, because Stephen doesn't have to be on the panel in June. Um, it may come to a different conclusion, but that's that's like he he said that it's not time critical. But my assumption would be that if we don't determine it tonight, he could go straight to appeal uh, because we're over time. He hasn't agreed to it, and Rex is absolutely right. It would have been nice for the applicant and or his agent, and particularly the builders to be here, so we could have uh, asked some questions or had some responses from them about why they've done it this way. Um, but i have stick by the deferral and, and wait, await the outcome. Sophie. <coughs> I think, um, as far as I see it, either way, we're in a difficult situation regarding appeals. If we defer, de defer the decision, there's a potential that they can, um, that they can appeal the decision to defer um, and seek approval that, through that respect. Or if we choose to refuse the application tonight, which I'm mindful to do if we, as well if we don't vote to defer it, they could appeal that decision and take that to uh, the planning inspectorate. So I think either way, there's a potential for a, pla there's a, potential for a planning appeal. Um, but I agree with um, Keith. I agree with Keith that um, a site visit would be particularly useful because I think it would allow us to be um, a little bit more um, firm in our convictions regarding um, the, the decision that we ultimately come to, um, because we'll have a lot more sort of information regarding the actual um, sort of over, overlooking aspect and the actual um, physical form of the proposal, which is quite difficult to get ascertained from just photographs taken by somebody else, and it's a lot easier to ascertain in person through an, through an in-person site visit. So in that, um, in that, on that basis, I would be mindful to ask for a... Um, uh, deferral as well, because I think it will also make our case stronger if um, if we choose to then refuse the application up following at the at the deferral meeting, and it does then go to appeal, um, because we'll have a lot because the councillors that will be at that planning panel will have made their decision based on a lot more information than we currently have tonight, and I think that'd be a stronger case for the council at appeal than if we were to simply refuse the application this evening. Thank you. Uh, I have nothing to add to the debate, so I'll go over to Alex. Thank you, Chair. Councillors, please raise your hand if you're in favour of the motion to defer. Against? And any abstentions? So that's two in favour, one against, and one abstention, Chair. Has been in, voted in favour of having a deferral of this application, so uh, there is no further uh, uh, process to be taken place with this application. Uh, and unless I'm mistaken, that concludes the business for this evening. And I will close the meeting at 2014. <laughs>